So I've made it to the semifinals in the Spin Dat 2022 Trasher Bash competition. And this is gonna be the bike that I'm gonna use for the competition. If you don't know about that competition, by the way, I'll put a link to it in the description. And anyway, there was 170 entries, 20 people got selected, including myself. I'm really happy about that. And uh, like I'm saying, this is the bike that I'm gonna enter with, or I did enter with. It's um, probably around 1990, plus or minus Schwinn Frontier. Really basic, I only paid $20 for this. It actually does ride, you know, fine actually. Gears shift, and uh, this is it. I haven't touched it since I bought it. It's exactly as I, as I got it with this horrible seat. Just, you know, everything, this is, you know, a $20 bike. My plan is with it, and basically the idea of the entire competition is to build something that's cool that starts off as very uncool. So this is definitely, in my opinion, starting off very uncool, very, unnoticeable i mean this thing was uh you know could easily be found in the garbage i happened to find it on facebook marketplace for 20 bucks but you know this type of bike definitely can be found in the garbage in this particular video though we're just going to be disassembling it and getting it down to the bare frame hopefully what this is is uh it does exactly what it's doing now if your skewer comes out or is too loose it will uh, disallow the wheel from coming out. Yep, it's doing its job now. It's kind of annoying though because I'm having a hard time getting the screw off the very first thing on this project. I hope that's not a bad, bad omen or something. I'm gonna try to reuse as many parts as possible in this build to keep the cost down as much as I can. So this chain, I'll check it. And if it's any good, I'll reuse it. But anyway, you know, it's a cheap bike. There's lots of these out here. It's no use putting expensive parts on it, in my opinion. So I'll definitely keep this uh, as a very budget bike. All the comments, and I got a lot of comments on it. I mean, probably well over 20 Maybe 30 comments about these little tabs. Everybody said they're like lawyer tabs or something like that, meaning that it was some kind of like legal situation is the only reason that they, it's true though, these, I mean, these do help in that case. So who knows, maybe I should just keep them. They look kind of funky, but they don't hurt anything. This isn't gonna be like a high performance bike or anything. So whatever, why not, why not keep them? Plus then I don't gotta worry about putting a washer in there or anything. Obviously it looks like I'm gonna need to get new screws or bolts rather. In terms of the parts for the build, um, I already have most of them. In fact, right after I get this uh, seat off, I will show you. Oh, it's so nice that a seat doesn't, uh, isn't stuck like it was on that other bike. But I'll show you the uh, parts that I've collected so far. This. All right, I kept all these parts in like this recycling bin just to keep them organized. Uh, here's a saddle I picked out. Used handlebar, nice and flat handlebar. This came from uh, Larry at Your Own Adventure. He gave me that as well as a bunch of other stuff. Don't even remember what's in this box. Something for the bike. The uh, Magic. 2K clear, this is what makes paint actually look good on bikes, in my opinion. I was gonna go with this green, kind of give it a nature look, but I think I'm gonna change, I think I've changed my mind, I'm gonna actually go with the, a red color, kind of like what it is now, like a maroon. Um, because originally I was thinking like a nature look, but now um, I have an idea about like making it more of an urban look, and I have a pretty fun idea, I think, and to make that kind of go along with the theme, I think red will actually be better. Plus you have the benefit if it gets scratched deeply, uh, and you go to the red underneath, it won't be as noticeable as if it's a green bike and it gets scratched and you see some red underneath. So I think I'm gonna order some red paint. That's all I have so far, and that's actually most of it. Oh, you know what, I know what this box is. That's the, uh, the crank set. So I'm gonna go with the one by crank set on this. I mean, this is not a performance bike. I really don't need more than two gears up front. And especially here in Florida where we don't have any kind of elevation or climb, so. And so if you like the build and you want to help me out, you can 
vote for me when the time comes, or vote for my build rather. Um, I think it's going to be in February. So right now there's 20 people in the semifinals. The next round, which will get you into the finals, will be only five people. So um, yeah, if you like the build and you want to help me out, uh, follow me on my Instagram maybe. Or maybe I'll even do it. Oh, hang on, this is pretty tight. That's really tight. Maybe I'll do it on my community page on YouTube. But anyway, somehow I'll try to put the news out there when it's time to vote for the builds. And uh, yeah, it would be awesome if you could give me a couple votes. I mean, there's a lot of good builds in there actually, so I'm not so sure that I'm gonna get even into the next round. But I think I can at least get into the top five. The top three get prizes, and they're pretty cool prizes. There's like uh, two park tool uh, bike stands. I know that, and I could use one of them because this one's okay. I actually have a video on this one when I bought it. It was 50 bucks. Come on, that's really tight. Um, it's okay. It's working fine, as you can see. But it's, I used to have a park tools uh, bike stand, and that one was actually way better. So, um, yeah. There's other cool prizes too, a lot of other cool prizes, so I'd love to get in the top three. That would be awesome. Okay, so both these crank bolts are pretty tight and giving me some trouble, so I'm just gonna let them soak in some penetrant lubricant spray. I've been using the uh, Walmart, whatever it's called, high-tech brand. It seems to me to be just as good as WD-40, and it's like, I don't know, half the cost. So you might want to try that. So anyway, that's just soaking, and I'm gonna take some other parts off. This bike is kind of rusty. I mean, I'm just now kind of noticing it. There's a lot of rust on the bolts, and even on the crank bolts, as I just mentioned, they're hard to get off. They're also pretty rusty. I mean, it's not extremely rusty. I don't see any problems with the frame, but I just noticing like all the bolts have rust on them. And where I got it was uh, right by the beach also, like, I can't remember if it was like near Daytona Beach or Flagler Beach, but it was like right on the beach. I mean, be just a block away. So uh, yeah, that, if you don't know, the salt water from the beach can cause metal, bare metals especially, to uh, rust a lot. I guess I don't really need to make it a secret what I'm trying to do with this build in terms of my little extra, you know. I can just, of course, build this kind of straight up as I have other bikes and I think it's more important to do it well than do a little gimmicks and stuff, but I do have a couple gimmicks, so to speak, that I want to uh, do to it to kind of set it apart, being this is a competition. Also, it'll just be fun and cool to do. Uh, the major, well, I'll tell you there's two of them, really, two things I want to do that's a little bit special, maybe, is I want to put a basket on here. I want to put my old Wald 137 on onto this bike. I think that'll look cool, kind of give it that utility and urban look. Um, but what I want to do also, I've seen a lot of them have the uh, mounts to, to the basket down here somewhere. It just kind of looks cooler than, I think anyway, than having the, uh, the mounts all the way down at the fork ends. So I'm probably gonna, I, I would like to weld something on right here, like a, a, a nut is what I'm thinking. Hang on a second, I'll show you what I'm thinking. I haven't actually grabbed one of these and visualized it yet. It was just kind of in my head. I don't know, maybe something like that. These will be kind of like that. I'm not sure, I'm gonna have to figure it out, but I was thinking of welding a nut there and then attaching the uh, the rod that connects the basket just like that. Or maybe even needs to be a little bit more on the outside, but uh, it'd be better if it went all the way through. So I'm not really sure yet, but something like that. If not, I've seen a lot of people use these like clamps, like band clamps of sorts with like plastic uh, isolator on them. So I could do that too. That's one thing I kind of want to do a little bit, set it apart is uh, to kind of a, you know, custom basket setup. But the other thing that's even more interesting probably, and the, part of the reason I want to go with the red, is because I was thinking about putting, making a, a pizza box that mounts on top of the basket so you can kind of click it in and it'll have like exactly enough room for like one Domino's large pizza made out of wood probably. And then you can slide the box in, close the door, and then I can bring pizza home because we get Domino's pizza sometimes, sometimes Pizza Hut. And uh, it would be cool if I could use my bike rather than having to take a car, but currently I can't really do that because uh, I'd probably drop the pizza at some point. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking, making like a custom pizza box for this thing. I think that would be really fun and cool looking. And 
you probably don't know, but I, I recently got a laser engraver. Uh, I actually have another channel too. That's a good, good chance I can mention that. I have another channel. I started all about like the shop tools. So uh, you can go check that out. I'll put a link to that in the description too. And in there I did a review on this laser engraver that I recently got. It's been really fun playing with the laser engraver. So I'm thinking that I'll, I'll laser engrave like a big pizza on the top of this wooden pizza box. Anyway, that's the dream. I kind of am hesitant to say it because um, like what if I don't get the time to do it or if I can't do it or something like that. But I, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to do this. So maybe this will help keep my motivation because I'll, I've already said that I plan on doing it. Keep me accountable as they say. Uh, obviously, some people have way more skill and better tools than me. Like that's not even a question. Some people have less, I think. Um, so there's no way that I'll, you know, be a better builder or have a better product. The best I can hope for is by doing kind of things like um, the pizza box and stuff like that, that I can use enough creativity and, you know, documentation and storytelling that enough people will still think it's a better project than some of the others. So that's kind of my approach to it. I know I can't win on pure customization. You know, there are people with much better skill, of course, and, and better tools and better shops. And a big part of it is more time. You know, I have a family and uh, lots of other things going on, so I can't, and I don't even know if I want to dedicate that much time to, uh, to building a bike out. Anyway, as I was saying, I wanna be, uh, be there for my daughter and my wife and not just spend all my time in the garage. I already work a regular nine to five as well, so I'm already at work, um, you know, most of the time. I want to spend all the rest of my remaining time just sitting in the garage with a bunch of old tools and stuff. But uh, I'll see if I can come up with an excellent product, excellent execution, best I can do anyway, and a little bit of creativity and just see maybe where that gets us. I'll probably reuse these uh, V-brakes. Oops, I need to take that cable off. I would like to uh, get some canning levers because I just think they look cooler. But again, I don't want to spend any money, so likely I'll keep these. Probably what I'll do is polish them as much as I can. And this build is was definitely motivated by Spindat and uh, his channel and his competition here, but it's not only for that. I'm gonna keep it right now. It, the purpose it's going to serve that I envision at least will be the bike that we can take to the grocery store or to the Walmart or wherever um, that I won't you know be super super worried if it gets stolen or whatever but currently all the bikes I have at this house at least um, I would really hate for any of them to get stolen I have my carbon fiber bike I got from Switzerland which it wasn't before but since I left Switzerland now it's like kind of sentimental I don't want to lose it I feel like it's I don't know part of my history there. I know it sounds super corny. Okay, I was kind of avoiding it. I put on some, some you know, lubrication, penetrate, whatever you call it. I was kind of hoping that it wouldn't come to this. I'm just going to have to squeeze really hard and hopefully this thing comes off because I can, yep, I can tell it's pretty dang tight. I use the hands plus arms technique to double the, well, not double, but increase. Oh, got it. Gosh, smushed my finger. <laughs> Smush my finger between the got a little cut to between the, the wrench and the crank, but I think it came loose at least. Yeah. Whew, that was tight. Alright, now that I got the crank bolts off, let's hope the cranks themselves aren't so hard. I think they'll be okay. I hope. Positive thinking. Ooh, okay, it's um, a little bit tight already. Actually, I think this is easier to do when the, I should have done it before, when the wheels are on and stuff, and then you can put it on the ground. Oh, starting to bleed a little bit. Then you can uh, put the bike on the ground and really shove down real hard. When it's on this bike stand, it's especially this one, <laughs> it's kind of like rickety, um, which makes things like this a little bit harder to do. I can use a hammer now. See if we can do this.
I really hope that I win one of the bike stands because this one I'm looking at it, it's like bending up at the neck here. <laughs> all in all, I did get this for $50. And at the time when I did the review, I was like, oh, it's not bad, $50, it works, does a job. But it's really not worth getting this thing. Um, I'll show you in a minute, but basically the neck here is like bending a lot. These things, let me see if you can show you. These things are like falling off sometimes, the, the little blue end caps. It's just not worth it. I mean, sometimes you can cheap out and get away with it, and sometimes you're happy and you're like, yes, I saved a lot of money. I mean, I do it all the time. But sometimes, like in the case of this bike stand, I kind of regret buying it, to be honest. Here's what I mean by this uh, neck that's like bending. You can see it's not very straight. Um, whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah, basically this is just, as tight as I make it, it's just not, not enough surface area. It's just too much flimsy plastic. And look at that. I mean, I don't even have much weight on it here. This bike is almost empty, but you can just see there's tons of motion. That's no good. So I really hope that I can win that bike stand. That would be awesome, that work stand. Pretty happy with the progress today. It looks like I should be able to get this thing stripped down to the bare frame. Then I can start getting the paint going and possibly the welding. My trouble with that welding idea is I don't have a welder right now, so I may need to buy one. I need to buy an impact driver and a welder for this project. But a welder would be good. I'd like to have one in general anyway. I want to get one of those uh, flux core ones that don't, uh, it's not like a big welder, you don't have to use gas. I kind of like those, I used one once. Here's a rusty 14 millimeter Craftsman though. I like working with gloves, I just picked these up at Walmart for like three dollars. Um, sometimes I forget to put them on like I did when I scuffed my finger, but it's really nice, just keeps your hands clean, even can protect them a little bit. I think it even looks better on the video. Should try to do that more often. There we go. I'm in Palm Coast now. I moved again, so that's actually part of the reason you haven't seen a ton of videos lately. It's because I've uh, been moving again. But hopefully we won't move for a little while again. A year or two, at least. I kind of like the look of that jockey wheel. That's cool. I'll probably just probably will use this this derailleur I don't it looks okay I'll probably keep using that just clean it up of course I'm gonna reuse as much as I possibly can I'm even gonna reuse the wheel I think I mentioned that before with the seven speed uh, I guess it's a free wheel because again this bike just doesn't need for my purpose on it I don't need a 10 speed I don't need a nine speed uh, seven speed will be fine. So it'll just be a one by seven and it's already a wide range. It's like at the uh, mega gear or whatever it's called. So I think we're good. I guess we'll go ahead and turn our attention to this, uh, oh, this bottom bracket bearing. Now, usually I don't reuse these just because I'm a little bit intimidated by them, but I'm going to give it a shot this time just again, because I don't want to add in any extra costs that I don't have to. And I don't think, I don't think I have a, uh, I don't think I have a bottom bracket right now to put in there. Yep. She's so cute. She said, can we do a family bike ride? I had already told her earlier we're doing a family bike ride. So she's pretty excited about that. Yeah, like I was saying though, I, I'm really not too experienced you know, doing these older style bottom bracket bearings. So I've been kind of intimidated and reluctant and I also don't have the tool for the wrench on this side, which is kind of a problem. But what I learned, I'll show you in a minute, what I've learned works pretty good is a giant pipe wrench. Might be wrong, it's kind of embarrassing, I don't know. But I think a pipe wrench works like this, as, it, as you tighten it, it tightens itself down. Like as, as you tighten your threaded object, the wrench itself jaws will tighten, so works pretty good. I should really just buy the right tool here, especially somebody who's doing a lot of, not a lot, but some vintage bike stuff. Okay, it's not just popping off like I hoped. 
because I don't want to damage it either if I'm going to reuse it. I could just stop here and maybe order one on Amazon. Why don't I do that? Let's just stop here. Don't don't screw this up. Okay, loosen that back up. Back it off. Back it off. What we're going to do before I screw that up, I'm just going to go on Amazon or somewhere. I'm going to order the spanner, I think as I call it. And uh, when it gets here, I'll take it off. No problem. I don't need to screw it up. And then I'll have the tool. Okay, so then all we have left is the handlebars and fork. And we're pretty much done for today. I'm not going to reuse this bar, these bars or this stem. I have cooler options in mind for that. Let's see. Okay, that came pretty easy. Okay, so what you usually do is just thread those out. Bring it out a little bit. You don't want it to completely come out of the little wedge. There's like a wedge down there. You just want to make it loose. And then you can take a hammer and just kind of hit it on the top and it'll break it, break it loose usually. Yep, there you go. Good. At least it's letting some things be easy. We got the cables all done. Yep, okay, so everything should come out. There's the wedge I was speaking of. Oh, there's water in there too. Get that out, get that out, get that out. All right, bars are off. Okay, last thing is the fork, and that's held in place with these uh, lock nuts and such. So I'm gonna need to get a wrench. It's actually moving pretty good, which gives me hope that the bearings are going to be serviceable. So let's grab some wrenches and get that off. So I think I have a spanner that'll fit the headset. Yep. And then the top one, you can just use anything. I'll just use this, this big guy here. Alrighty. Let's see if we can get this off. So. Gonna hold that like that. Yeah, let's hold it like that, maybe. Yep. All right, no problem. Nice and easy. I guess uh, that's a 36 millimeter, according to this wrench. It's coming off fairly easily. Okay, bottom bearings are looking pretty good. Not all rusty. Occasionally you'll see them super rusty and dry, but these I can still see have a little bit of grease. I don't really see any water in there, so that's a very good sign. This, will this headset will probably be very easy. Oh yeah, that doesn't look bad at all. It's gonna be very easy to service and uh, put right back. To get the bearing caps out, it's pretty easy. You use one of these, usually it's easy. One of these tools, which uh, are totally totally worth having. I've done it without them too, but definitely want to get there. It was only like get these. It's only like uh, get this. Excuse me. I think it was only like ten to fifteen dollars. So it's really easy. All you do is stick it like that. Hear that click? That means they went past the, the edge. Go like that, and then just uh, hopefully hammer the bearing cap right out. Yep, it's already moving. You can see a little gap started there. There it goes. What I'm trying to do here is show what it looks like when this tool goes in and how it works. So, good. this is, goes in like that. And I'll go real slow and you can see it click in. Just like that. Now, when you hammer it, it's gonna push that right out. Let's hope we don't break my camera lens. There it goes. Okay, I'm not super sure how I'm gonna get this head badge out. My older Schwinn, it was actually screwed in with tiny screws, but this one seems to have like a, a pop rivet. So I don't really wanna drill anything. Um, let me show you the inside of, the, inside of it. Yeah, see there's just some little posts there, so I wonder if I can 
I don't know, do something with them. Let me try, let me try just pushing them out. I don't think I'll be that lucky, but let's see what we can do here. I'm just putting the edge of the screwdriver on there. Yep, that one did it too, it popped. Cool, uh, that might be, might end up being easier than I thought it was gonna be. So I'm gonna take a same screwdriver and there we go. Easy. I probably put screws on when I put it back on there. Ah, so easy. Yeah, I'm just gonna, and when I put it back, which I think I will do, I'll, uh, or I might get it, I might not put it back, I might just do stickers. I kinda like stickers better than this type of stuff because this one's kinda ugly. I'm not sure how I would restore that. We'll, we'll see. Hey, leave me, leave me a message in the comment. Let me know if we should try to restore this little piece of metal or just buy a sticker, put it on top. And if I do that, I may need to fill, I will need to fill the holes in too somehow. That should be pretty easy though. That is actually totally it for today. If you're still watching, I'll give you a little bonus footage. I'll show you what I'm wanting to do after these, after that bike. I have a few frames here. Uh, the one on the left you may recognize. It was one of my first uh, popular videos. Actually, I think it still holds the most views. That was the uh, mountain bike to road bike conversion. Uh, next, on the far right, is a Jameis full suspension bike from 1996, I think, about. Really old. Uh, Larry gave that one to me. So, uh, I'd love to get it going. I've never owned a full suspension bike before, so that would be super cool. And then, Larry also gave me this, uh, was it a Trek Madone or something like that frame? But it's got a special, special problem. You may know if you've watched his channel, he did show about it. Mm, I don't know, that'll be an especially, specially hacked up, interesting build if I ever do it. I think that is about it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next time. Again, um, stay tuned to my Instagram or the community tab here and I'll let you know when the next round is. Maybe I'll make even another video before then. But uh, yeah, just stay tuned however you want. I also have Facebook groups. Um, I even made a Facebook group for Spindat just so I can talk about uh, the build and stuff. So if you wanna see that, uh, I'll put a link to that in the description too. Please check it out. Feel free to join the group, it's a public group. So hop in there, you don't have to do anything, just, uh, just jump in. All right, thanks everybody, bye.